Uh, I know that uh, it's not easy to relive what happened for you and, and for the officers behind you and for the family members of officers uh, in, in the audience this evening. Um, but it's, it's really important for the country uh, to have a full accounting and understand what happened. Uh, I want to start, Officer Edwards, with a short clip that um, shows the horrible moment when you were injured uh, as the peace circle was breached. Officer Edwards, can you describe uh, the crowd that had assembled at the Peace Circle as, as you and your fellow officers uh, stood behind and guarded the bike racks at the Peace Circle? Yes, so um, there were about, I want to say about five of us on that line. Um, and there were, so there was our bike rack and then at the bottom of the Pennsylvania Avenue walkway or right by Peace Circle, there was another bike rack. And so the crowd had kind of gathered there. Um, it was the crowd led by um, Joseph Biggs. And they were mostly in civilian clothes. There were some um, who had military fatigues on. Um, we could see people with uh, bulletproof vests on, you know, things like that. Um, they didn't seem, you know, extremely cohesive, but they had gathered there um, in their outfits, um, but they had gathered there together. And um, Joseph Biggs started, he had a, micro, or a megaphone, and he started talking about, you know, first it was things kind of relating to Congress. And then the table started turning once the, um, what is now the, the Arizona group is what you said, um, the crowd with orange hats, they came up chanting um, F-U-C-K Antifa. Um, and they joined that group. And once they joined that group, Joseph Biggs' rhetoric turned to the Capitol Police. He started asking us questions like, You've, you didn't miss a paycheck during the pandemic, um, mentioning stuff about our pay scale was mentioned, and you know, started turning the tables on us. And I've worked, I can you know, conservatively say probably hundreds of civil disturbance events, I know when I'm being turned into a villain, and that's when I turned to my sergeant and I stated the, uh, the understatement of the century. I said, uh, Sarge, I think we're gonna need a few more people down here. <laughs> um, and so after that, you know, I think uh, they started conferring, they went a little silent, they started conferring among uh, each other I saw um, the person now identified as Ryan Samsel. He put his arm around Joseph Biggs and they were talking and then they started approaching the first barricade. They ripped the first barricade down and they approached our uh, bike racks. Um, you know, at that time we started um, holding on, grabbing the bike racks. You know, there weren't many of us, so I grabbed um, the middle between two different bike racks. And, you know, I, I wasn't under any pretense that I could hold it for very long, but I just wanted to, you know, make sure that we could get more people down and uh, get our CDU units time to, to answer the call. So we started grappling over the bike racks. Um, I felt the bike rack come on top of my head and I was pushed backwards 
and my foot caught the stair behind me and I, uh, my chin hit the handrail and then I, at that point I had blacked out but my, um, the back of my head clipped the concrete stairs behind me. Uh, and you were knocked unconscious, is that right, Officer Edwards? Yes, ma'am. Um, but then when you regained consciousness, even with the injuries, you returned to duty, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Um, you know, at that time, adrenaline kicked in. I ran towards the west front, and I tried to hold the line at the Senate steps um, at the lower west terrace. Um, more people kept coming at us. Um, it just seemed like, you know, more and more people started, um, you know, coming on to the west front. They started overpowering us. And that was right about when MPD's officers showed up. Um, their bike officers pushed the crowd back and allowed um, our CDU units as well as theirs to form that line that you see, um, that very thin line between us and the protesters or the rioters, um, you know, at that time. I fell behind that line and um, for a while, I started um, decontaminating people who had gotten sprayed um, and treating people medically who, who needed it. And then you were injured again uh, there on the West Terrace, is that right, Officer Edwards? Yes, ma'am. So um, after a while, I got back on the line. Um, I got, it was on the house side of the Lower West Terrace, and um, I was holding that line for a while. There weren't many of us over there, um, and Officer Sicknick was behind me um, for most of the time, for about uh, 30 to 45 minutes that I was down there. Um, we were just as the best we could, we were just, you know, grappling over bike racks and trying to hold them as quick as possible. Um, all of a sudden, I see movement to the left of me, and I turned, and it was Officer Sicknick with his head in his hands, and he was ghostly pale, um, which. I, I figured at that point that he had been sprayed and I was um, concerned. My, uh, you know, cop, cop alarm bells went off um, because if you get sprayed with pepper spray, you're going to turn red. He turned um, just about as pale as this sheet of paper. And so I looked back to see what had hit him, what had happened and that's when I got sprayed in the eyes as well. Um, I was taken to be decontaminated by another officer, um, but we didn't get the chance because we were then tear gassed. Uh, and we um, are gonna play just a, a brief clip of, of that moment that you've just described, Officer Edwards. <laughs> 